All right, it's week two in statics, and I wanted to record another video and begin to get you all thinking about free body diagrams. And we're going to talk more about free body diagrams as we get in a little bit later. So this is not the only time you'll see it. We're starting to think about free body diagrams also when we start thinking about equilibrium problems, which is kind of what we're doing this week, right? And so this is kind of a little bit of a preview. I, I want to just think through some, some problems very quickly, help you see it, and help prepare you for hopefully being able to solve things uh, more in the future. Okay, so I wanted to walk you through three different problems of how we would set this up. And I, I don't have the wording on the problem, but I think you'll get the idea of what we need to do here. Okay, so uh, you see a problem there. It looks like some kind of mechanism, maybe like a brake mechanism or something in a car, uh, something where the user uh, pushes forward with a 350 Newton force right there. And maybe we need to solve for other forces on the mechanism, okay? So you can kind of see, and, and again, when you draw free body diagrams, you don't have to be perfect, but you can kind of see the, the shape here. You don't have to draw this perfect. You can draw something like this, I don't know, okay? And then you can have this point A here, you've got a point D there, and then you've got this force, which I will draw here as 350 Newtons, and I will make sure to express the angle here, because this is gonna be important later, I'm sure, of 20 degrees, okay? And if you want to, you could add the dimensions here, but that's not as critical at this point. What I really want to do is just focus on the forces. So that is easy there, I hope, that you see, oh, obviously the force at the foot pushing for 350 Newtons. What about what's happening at D, what's happening at A, okay? Well, what happens at D, it looks to me like D there is pinned, that point is pinned to some bracket that's pinned to ground. And so when we have a pin, we will typically draw a pin like this. We'll have a dx and a dy, okay? That's how we'll draw when something is pinned to another object. It can rotate there. Certainly it can rotate at D, but it's stuck at D. It can't translate. It can't move. So we have a dx and a dy. Now what happens at A? Well, it looks like it's a spring. And the tricky thing about a spring is the spring could be in tension, right? And tension means that you have a pull, right? Or it could be in compression. And that means the spring is pushing, right? It's either a pull or a push. Springs can push or pull. Unlike a rope, a spring can push or pull. So um, I usually, when I do these, I just by default draw them in tension. So I would draw a pull and I would probably write T, uh, I probably call it TAB because it's going from A to B. Okay, and I, I draw it as a pull. So it's pulling on A. Now, does that mean that's absolutely true? We don't know. Now, it kind of makes sense because if you're pushing down here at the foot, it's probably rotating this bracket around, which probably pulls A to the right, and meaning that the spring is probably in tension, right? But that's okay. You don't know, so you take a guess, all right? Sometimes we have to guess when it comes to the direction of forces, and that's okay. We don't know for sure the direction of the force, so we guess, and then we do the analysis. And if the analysis comes out where TAB is maybe a negative number, that just tells you you guessed wrong. And that's okay, that's not really a big deal at all. So this would be a free body diagram that I would use for this type of problem, okay? Hopefully you get some of the um, ways in which I thought through that. Let's take a look at another problem here. Okay, we have a girl, uh, the, the, the girl here uh, in this problem, let's say uh, she weighs 100 pounds, I'm just making it up, okay? And, um, and she's standing on this board, and the board is, it says maybe in the problem, the board is massless. Now, is a board truly massless? No, right? The board is not truly massless, but it probably has a low enough mass that we say it's negligible. It's just small, doesn't matter, okay? 
And so we want to draw a free body diagram. Now notice here too, you, it's easy to miss if you're not paying attention. There's a rope there, right? There's a rope that is uh, from the ground, something stuck in the ground like a hook, and it's attached at the end of the board at B, okay? So there's a few things here that are interesting about this. So obviously the key piece that connects everything is that board, right? So we want to draw a free body diagram of the board. So I do my best I can to draw something straight, and I'm not very good at that, but that's okay. It's not usually a big deal. You know, we recognize we've got point A over here, we got a point B over there. Okay. And we need to put all the forces on it. Certainly there is a force in the middle here of 100 pounds, and we know a weight force always is directed straight down. Okay. Now, what else do we know about this? Well, we know the rope has a tension here that's directed up here, T rope or something like that, TR for tension of the rope. Okay, that's fine. And we even know that angle there is angle alpha, right? We know that rope is going up with angle alpha. But what about the forces at A and B? And this can be tricky for students to understand, but the force at B Whenever you notice you've got something here that has an edge and it's against a flat surface, right? You have an edge meeting a flat surface. How do you draw the force there? Well, typically when you have one flat surface, you do perpendicular to the one flat surface. So in this particular case, when we're doing this, it would be perpendicular to this one flat surface. So if you have a flat surface and an edge, look for the flat surface and draw perpendicular there, okay? So in this case, the perpendicular here would look like this, right, FB. And it does appear that this force at B is perpendicular to the rope because the rope is actually parallel to the uh, slope here at B, whereas the force would have to be perpendicular. Okay, so these actually are right, right angle between the two. Okay, now what about at A? Well, same thing applies. You have an edge meeting a straight path here. So if you have one of them that's straight and one's at an edge, do perpendicular to the one straight. There you go, FA. So we have our contact forces, we have our rope, and we have our weight forces, okay? So that's how I would draw the free body diagram here, okay? One more. This is kind of a unique one here because it's a little bit hard to understand what's our, what's our uh, body that we're going to use. In this case, and this happens in a lot of problems, what is the body of interest? In this case, the body is going to be this rectangular, um, I think they, the, the problem calls it a tape, okay? Some kind of rectangular box, whatever, and these pulleys or whatever we want to call it. They are together one body, okay? Okay, the background rectangle plus pulleys are one body. So if that's the case, how would I draw the free body diagram? Well, let's take a look at it. I'm running a little low on space on this one. I probably should have made this a little smaller, so I'm going to do that. Okay, so uh, what do we got here? Well, this looks like it's pinned to ground, so I'm going to, I'll have to, I don't have any, uh, letters here. So I'll call that point A, we'll call that point B. So this is going to be an AX and an AY, right? That's a pin, right? There's a pin right there. Now again, there's a spring here. I don't know which way it is. So typically I draw my springs pulling unless I know they're pushing. So I'll call that FB. It goes in the same direction as the spring, right? Now the other thing you'll notice is you've got this tension T moving through this rope or whatever it is that was wrapped through two pulleys. So how do you express that tension T on the actual uh, box or rectangle, whatever you want to call it? Well, remember that these ropes always pull. So what you could do is you could draw the two pulleys on there, just for reference. Okay, eh, that one, that last one is probably not the best. Let me draw it bigger. Let me draw this a little bigger because I want to make sure that they line up well with each other. That's better. Okay, so 
How do we draw that? Well, this is a tension T here. It's pulling, but it's also pulling with tension T here, but it's also pulling with tension T here, and it's also pulling with tension T here. Now that should be, hopefully, realize that straight. So notice there's actually four tensions, but you can simplify this a little bit here because this particular set of two tensions are equal and opposite right there. Notice that the tension down is equal to the opposite of the tension up between the two pulleys. So we can actually simplify it and delete, let's see if I can delete this, and delete those um, two internal forces there. And you can end up leaving it to that, which is a simpler free body diagram. Okay, you don't really have to add those two T's, one down and one up, because basically they're going to cancel each other out. Now, you could if you wanted to, but that's really all you need. So at this point, all I wanted to try to do is get you thinking about two-dimensional objects and forces and start getting you thinking about how to set up the free body diagrams. Okay, hopefully this isn't new. You've done some of this in physics. And don't worry, we're going to have time to keep building these concepts. So again, this is just extra information now to help get you thinking about stuff that you're going to be really needing to know in just a couple of weeks. Hope it helps, and good luck with homework.